Guess what? Money will change you. Money will change you for the better or for the worst? Depends on what's inside, right? Depends on your belief system. Some of you, what happens when you make a lot of money? You're gonna bless a lot of people, man, just by your nature and basically what you're what you about to do. Let me prepare you. Let me prepare you. Some of you guys make a lot of money, next thing you know, you are feeding an addiction that nobody knows about. And we wonder where you're at. Addiction to pornography, addiction to drugs, addiction to alcohol, addiction to gambling. You, by the way, do you, th you think I deal with this at my level? Because the challenge is I have a bunch of guys in my team that make 250, 500, they've made more money than they've ever made in three or four family lifetimes. Guess what type of coaching I have to do with my guys across the country? Hey bro, how are you doing with your finances? You're saving money, you're investing your money, why? Because if money doesn't go to some form of investment, guess what people do with it? They'll, they'll, they'll spend it, they'll inhale it, they'll drink it, they'll gamble it. There's a psychology. How many guys know that uh, how you approach anything is really a psychology? How you approach your marriage, how you approach your relationships, how you approach your finances. How many realize that your upbringing with money, the psychology of how you grew up with money was all jacked up, right? <laughs> How many before you're 18 years old, you realize you didn't know you had a cable bill in your name, you're graduating high school? <laughs> it's like, it's like, hey mom, dad, did I, I didn't know I was at AT&T and I'm default by six months, I haven't paid back. <laughs> right? Right? So, so uh, you, uh, you ruined your credit even though before you realized what you needed credit for. Right? So, you're jacked up with credit, we're jacked up with our finances. Why this month, what's April the month of? Financial literacy. Financial literacy, financial literacy month, okay? What is literacy? Knowledge, awareness, skills, behaviors. Knowledge, skills, awareness, and behaviors. That's literacy. So in other words, <clears throat> how many of you would love to learn a new language? Okay, yeah. uh, uh, Tiffany, uh, stand up real quick. What language do you love to learn? French. French. Oui, oui, poo poo. Okay? <laughs> so what, uh, uh, did you take, by the way, did anybody take French in high school? Okay, by the way, stand up. If you took French, if you took French in high school, go and stand up. Okay, uh, how many years did you guys take French? <laughs> two years, two years, one year, two years? Okay, outside of French kissing, do you know how to speak French? Well, how come, but you took it for two years? Wow. Bonjour, oui, oui, well, that's it. Je uh, m'appelle <laughs> right? Right? If I Saint Laurent, right? Croissant, that's it. By the way, is that French fries? That's the only thing we know, right? <laughs> but you took it for two years. You took it for one year. How come you don't know French yet? Because the hour you're out of, out of class, when do you speak French again? The next day, hopefully, and you speak French again. So in other words, if you're in just kind of tiptoeing, learning a new language, guess what? You don't pick up the behaviors, the awareness, the skills, right? You get it? You don't get all those four things. Okay, grab seats. So now, tip, tip, stand up. What happens if we get you qualified for a company trip for 30 days in Paris? Is that, is that that's French, right? <laughs> but for 30 days, you're in Paris, and everybody's speaking French. Everybody's driving French. <laughs> how, how do French people drive? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's speaking to your French, everybody's ordering lunch and dinner in French, breakfast in French, pick up the phone in French. And eventually over time, what's gonna, as much as that happen to you? I'm gonna learn how to in how long of a time frame? Maybe a week, words? Or, or, or else you starve and, and, and right, you, don't, you don't find a place to live. So would you, would you agree that immersing yourself in an environment, you'll eventually start learning the language faster than one hour a day in French class at school? Absolutely. Right, it makes sense? Give, give tip a hand, thank you. Because part of the process of you growing, listen, if, if I ask you right now, okay, here's a million bucks. What would you do with it? Invest. Are you will. Invest. Okay, let me ask you this next question. Who, who is your one, two, three, four, five next phone calls? You. Yes, yes. Right? So some people know and some people don't. So you see the process? So in other words, even if we gave you a million dollars, you still wouldn't know what to do with it. So, would you agree that we've had some form of universal basing income the last two years since the pe pandemic started? Yeah. It's called unemployment checks, stimulus checks, child tax credits, it's called some form of universal basing income where everybody got access to some form of government money, yes? yes. Where did the money end up? Back with the who? The rich, the rich got rich. because they knew what to do when there's a flow of money. Yeah. So your friends and family, how many, how many had friends during the lockdowns, they're just, oh, dog, why do we gotta go to work? I'm making more money on 
unemployment, then they're actually going to work. Yeah. And they just hung out playing video games. Ah! <laughs> right? <laughs> this is the life. And you're like thinking to myself, I'm working. I'm working. By the way, uh, my cameraman, say hi to Ivan back there. Say hi, Ivan. What right? Up? Hey. Ivan was, Ivan, he had his, 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 his uh, a peer that I hired at the time. They were both working because I hire in twos. That's a hiring technique. I hire in twos because I want to see which one is going to step up and compete or which one is going to be lazy. And, right? and his buddy decided, hey, Matt, why do I got to work, bro? Why do I got to shoot video and edit video? I'm making more money on unemployment. Why are you working, Ivan? Ivan says, do you want to have a job after the pandemic? <laughs> I'm locked into a vision here too on top of that. Well, I have a vision to take the seven figure squad to help people think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore they become a first generation cash flow millionaire. I'm behind more than just editing video. I got a purpose behind me, right? right? What about the energy? That's part of energy and enthusiasm. Here's the thing that we can't ever correct or help you with. This is the number three one. Attitude. Attitude. <laughs> it's attitude. Have you, have you? Have you heard that saying, your attitude is your altitude, altitude right? And by the way, part of attitude is part of gratitude. If you're grateful about life, guess what happens to your attitude? It's positive. If you're not grateful about life, guess what happens to your attitude? It's negative. Number three. This is both conscious and subconscious. Psychology is both conscious and subconscious based on three things. Very simply put, the books you read, the meetings you attend, and the people you... Surround yourself with, okay? Why do you think church has Bible study on Wednesday? Exactly, because what happens? You go on Sunday, oh, hallelujah, worthy. Hallelujah, praise your name, right? You leave church, and your ministry and your calling is already challenged by the time you get out of the parking ministry. Right? Could you imagine? Listen, listen. How do you drive like an a-hole? You got a bumper fish on your car. And you won't let me go through, you cut me off. Right? <laughs> Just, so midweek, the church tries to install some Bible study to reinforce the things that you learned on Sunday. Okay? And some churches are, you know, I, I went, I, I, uh, when I received the Lord at 30 years old, this church had everything going on every day. Was, we were in the hood. This is Humble Park, Chicago, but every day we had something, man. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm like, yo, no. <laughs> After I was like, yo, um, can I deal with my first ministry? Oh, what's that? My family? <laughs> because I was involved in choir ministry, homeless ministry, you know, financial ministry, you know, uh, uh, buildings and grounds ministry, because I had to serve the Lord, but yet I had to serve my family too. I had to run my business, I had to run my family and ministry. So here are the things though, but in the meantime, guess what I learned a lot of? I learned a lot about the Bible. Learn about what scriptures. How many of you guys have, have seen my Sunday series on Proverbs? We're breaking down a proverb every week for the next 31 weeks. And I'm not trying to show, show, uh, shove Jesus or the Bible down anybody's throat. I realize that, man, there's so many awesome tweets inside Proverbs. Less than 140 characters about how to live a better life. How to manage wealth and prosperity and abundance. Book of Proverbs, written by the wisest and richest king who ever lived, King Solomon. Listen, I'm not trying to shove Jesus or, anything, or any religion down your throat, but just check out Proverbs. Let's see what it has to say about, hey, here's what he says about the people you surround yourself with. It says, good character is corrupted by bad company. If you, hang, if you hang around a bunch of broke people, guess what starts happening to you? And if never read a book, guess what starts happening to you? Stop right, you stop reading the books. The, the, the challenge is most people, when they get a book, they never get past page 19. <laughs> right? So, so off, I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book right now. My, my, my book right, we have a meeting tomorrow at 3 o'clock. My book writer said, slam everything in the first 19 pages. Because chances are, this is going to give him an opportunity to, see the, to read the rest of the book. First 19 pages. So, think about this. The psychology of just the books you read, the means you attend, and the people you surround yourself with. Next slide. Because if I, one of these days, guess what? We did the math. This is why this is a great opportunity for you to be in business. I'm talking about the insurance business. We've done the math. We read the stats. We saw the science behind it. You know what we discovered? That sadly, everybody one day is going to die. <laughs> Sadly. What? Yeah, correct. You know, it's, it's a, right? So, with that being said, do you want to die rich or do you want to die broke? Rich. Do you want your family to be rich or do you want to be broke after you die? Rich. Some of you have the opportunity to plant a financial flag in the ground and say, you know what? Nobody in my family is going to be ever broke ever again. And so, here, 
it's part of it. Why did you get involved? Because I, how I used to think is, oh, six inches in front of my face, paycheck to paycheck, that's all I care about. Then I realized, I woke up to an understanding, like, yeah, it sucks living paycheck to paycheck. Number seven, belief in upward mobility. This is why we love capitalism. Because anybody from anywhere can become anything if you are willing to do the work. So when you're looking at these, when you're looking at these things, this is what I call my comfort zone. Okay, inside your comfort zone, you got your values, your principles, your work ethic, your blueprint, your program, your health, commitment, character, conflict, resolution, urge, etc. Now you need strategy, you need a mindset strategy and reality. You can have upward mobility if you shift these things. Now, does this happen overnight? No. Does it, is, it, is it over a process though? Yes. So sometimes when people here make a lot of money in too short period of time, I worry. Do you know why? Because they got upward too fast. So, for example, in, in, in professional sports, what do we worry about when a free agent has a new team? When there's a, when there's a free agent and he comes down to a new team, what, what, and he's got a big fat contract, is he going to play good? Because he just got paid good. Because when he initially get drafted, what happens? Look at Zion Williamson. Do you remember when he was at Duke? Some of you guys vowed Zion Williamson when he was in high school. 6'9", 280, has a 45-inch vertical in high school. He was tearing down rims. It looked like he was, he was a man-child. <laughs> and then he gets to college. He still looks like a man-child, dunking over college athletes. He was, what, 18 years old? Massive. But what happened? We got the contract. He got the shoe deal. What happened? We got all this pro money. Maybe standards dropped a little bit. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Standards dropped a little bit. Didn't have to work out as much. Look at him now. What, what, what's, what's, the, what's the negative chat about Zion Williamson, Zion Williamson right now? Massively, is he like a little bit overweight or? Right? They're like worried, like, yo, bro, what's up? You just signed a massive contract. Why? Because money, guess what? Money will change you. Money will change you for the better or for the worst? For the worst. Depends on what's inside, right? Depends on your belief system. Some of you, what happens when you make a lot of money? You're going to bless a lot of people, man, just by your nature and based on what you're about to do. Let me prepare you. Let me prepare you. Some of you guys make a lot of money. Next thing you know, you are feeding an addiction that nobody knows about. And we wonder where you're at. Addiction to pornography, addiction to drugs, addiction to alcohol, addiction to gambling. By the way, do you, th you think I deal with this at my level? Because the challenge is I have a bunch of guys on my team that make 250, 500. They've made more money than they've ever made in three or four family lifetimes. Guess what type of coaching I have to do to my guys across the country? Hey, bro. How are you doing with your finances? You're saving money, you're investing your money. Why? Because if money doesn't go to some form of investment, guess what people do with it? They'll, they'll, they'll spend it, they'll inhale it, they'll drink it, they'll gamble it, okay? So, based on this, how would you like to see, like in the summertime, because you guys are actually applying this stuff, and by summertime, you're upgrading to your dream cars. And then, and then people come into that parking lot over there on Tuesdays and said, before they even get into the BOM, you got lined up Porsche, Ferrari, Bentley, Rolls Royce, Lambo. It's like an exotic car dealership out there. Yeah. Right? And you feel bad because you're pulling up with your Mercedes Benz. <laughs> <laughs> At least I can put my top down. Right? right but uh, uh, if you've worked this business out right, what do we teach on Saturday? We teach financial concepts on Saturdays, yes? Yes. So, for example, one of the videos I have on, on Seven Fear Squad is how I drive my Rolls Royce for 25 bucks a month. Would you like to have a Rolls Royce? Some of you guys have a Rolls Royce as a dream car, yes? Would you like to be able to acquire that because you have a corporation, you have business credit and income from your business, then you can buy and write off your, 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 your car payment, and next year your net, net payment is 25 bucks a month. People spend more money on coffee than I'd spend on my Rolls Royce. <laughs> By the way, I'm about to trade in my Rolls Royce. I'm about to get another one. Uh, right, I'm, I'm so bored with it. <laughs> <laughs> God, I... I, I, I uh, what, listen, at, th at this point right now, some of you guys got some dreams going on. And, and your notes on what, 420, today's the 26th? 426, 2022. Put in your notes right now. What is your dream car? 20, because I want you to refer back to those a year from now. 426, 2022, what is your dream car? Put it down, write it down. Okay, what is your dream car? So now, now you got this. Guess what now? For some of you, that's bold. I'll put this as a stat update, put it as a tweet, Facebook update, or even a uh, Facebook story, or a profile post on, on Instagram. You put it on TikTok. I declare on this day, 4 2022 that a year from now, I'll have my dream car. Or six months from now, I'll have my dream car. Put it out there, be bold about it. Because then you're going to show your Sweet. proof of concept. Hold yourself. By the way, I just want to let you know, I'm holding myself accountable. In 10 years, I'll be making a movie 
about a hero in the insurance industry, and everybody's going to want to watch it. Yeah. Right? Ten years from now, I'm going to be funding and financing a movie. I don't know if it's going to be India or if I'm going to sell it to Sony or whatever the case may be. But there's a story out there that hasn't been told about the insurance industry. Because, for example, you've seen Wall Street, right? Yes. Well, so Wall Street's got their movie and everybody wants to be a stockbroker, right? Yes. What, about, uh, what about real estate? Does real estate have their movie or TV shows or their own daggone channel? Yes. They got HGTV, right? Yes. And everybody wants to be a real estate agent, okay? Yes. What about the insurance industry? <laughs> like, why not? Do you realize that 60% of all corporate bonds purchased in America on, on, on Wall Street is purchased by the insurance companies? In other words, if you take insurance out of our economic system in America, who knows what these companies would be doing? Yeah. So in other words, you, by putting your money inside policies, you effectively are investing in America. Yeah. Made in the USA. Uh, number 10, uh, uh, putting us all together. Yeah, putting us all together. What's your outcome? PHP Dallas, what's your outcome? Are you clear about what you want? Because if you're not clear, if you're not clear about what you want, for example, if I told you, hey, Meet me at the office. Where? Carrollton. Well, what's the address? Don't know. It's in Carrollton, though. So imagine I said, Will, come out to my office in Carrollton. Just come out. Where? I don't know. We're somewhere in Carrollton. Am I giving them clarity? Am I giving them directions? No. So that's like you saying, I want to make a million dollars. Or that's like you saying, I want to be financially free. Financially free, too vague. Make a million dollars, too vague. Question has got to be, got to be specific. You've got to have a deadline and you have to have the cost. Again, you have to, have, you have to be specific. You have to have a deadline and you have to know what the cost is. Meaning, what price are you willing to pay? Not sacrifice. What price are you willing to pay? How, how many guys uh, uh, and gals at the beginning of the year said, man, I have a New Year's resolution. I want to look like this. I want to fit in this dress. I want to go from a one pack to a six pack. Right? <laughs> some, of you guys, some of you guys say, I, have, I, I want to get out of debt, et cetera, et cetera. But it's got to be specific. It's got to have a deadline. And it's got to have a cost, a price that you're willing to pay. Number three, who should you specifically talking to? Who should you be talking to? And what should you be asking them? In this office, here's what's going to happen. The performers are going to talk to the performers. The non-performers are going to talk to the who? Because you feel indifferent talking to the performers. Because if you're a non-performer, you feel indifferent because if you talk to a performer, you feel like you're being held to a higher standard. Well, good. You should be held to a higher standard. Right? By the way, we're not going to give you a hard time about it. Will we poke fun at you? Of course. But guess what you want to be long-term? Do you want to be a non-performer long-term or a performer long-term? So if you want to be a performer long term, who should you be talking to? Performers. Performers. By the way, as we, as we leave tonight, I'm going to see who you guys go eat with. I'm going to see who you guys talk to in a parking lot. I won't judge you for it. I'm just going to observe. I'm like, oh, shoot, they had so much potential. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or I see performers like, oh, dog, that's the right conversation you need to be having. That, that person is going to push each other. Listen, we have a competitive environment, do we not? Yeah. Yeah. But why do we push you to perform? Because together we are, because if I'm around you, remember, we are different by the books we read, the meetings we attend, and the people we. So if I'm a good friend to you, if I'm a good friend to you, guess what I do to you? I push you to maximize your potential. I don't let you recruit yourself to lower standards if I'm a, if I'm a friend. Okay? Here, friends here, don't let friends drive drunk. <laughs> okay? I'm, friends don't let friends have low standards. Thank <laughs> you.